Cool. So uh, Stephen Kratz, our, one of our newest teachers at the Lamplighter Guild this July 9th through the 14th. Stephen, uh, welcome. Thanks for having me. Okay, so uh, this one's going to be really, really exciting because uh, just today, Molly and I did a podcast on uh, Proverbs chapter 8. And Stephen, this is going to be so cool. In, uh, in Proverbs 8, it talks about that wisdom was with God during creation, um, delighting um, in the sons of men or the sons of Adam and rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth. And I looked up those words, delight and rejoicing, and they carry the idea of in creation, God and wisdom together combined were playfully having fun and dancing within their creative um, sphere of creating the heavens and the earth. So can you get, I never saw that before. And when I, when I got that idea in my head that that creating something was supposed to be playful and fun, almost like a dance. And do you ever get that way when you've created something that is, um, I don't know, something like, wow, I can't, that's, that's really good. Like at the end of everyday creation, God's like, this is good. And this is very good. Do you, do you ever get that way? Yeah. Uh, I recently, um, I've compiled from my sketchbooks over the years, uh, poster size image with just a hundred little faces um, that I had drawn, you know, from various places that I'd gone and, and I framed it up, uh, you know, I was doing an art exhibition and, uh, but I took it in at the end of the night from the studio and just looked at it for the longest time. I think it was seeing those faces rearranged uh, in a pleasing way that was the first time I'd ever seen them all together wow. and um, but it it was both a, a pleasing thing and an, an excitement to see the object but then also a, a reflection on all these people that I had been brought into their lives you know we are paths across at some point so it was a it was an emotional uh thing mm -hmm. but there was that sort of uh, fun to it and certainly drawing um, has really fun moments so for those that are going to be watching this you look really really young I would put you at I don't know 18 <laughs> that's but, been a while yeah <laughs> uh, 36 so 36 and married and have how many children two girls yeah oh praise the lord okay so I, eventually in this interview, I want you to take us for a tour in your studio. But before we do that, um, we have some mutual friends that uh, you've had the opportunity to be mentored and inspired by. And uh, let's start with um, um, Mikado Fujimura. Mm -hmm. You've, uh, you, you had some access to him and, and I know that you love his work and I, I love his work. Tell me a little bit about uh, Mikado and his influence in your life. Sure. Uh, when I was in college, I had the opportunity to go to New York City during my summers. Uh, I studied in South Carolina, but I went up and worked uh, with a, a group that was uh, connected with his organization at the time, the International Arts Movement. But uh, and, and I got to bring fellow students from my school up there to interact with what they were doing. And it was, you know, a discussion uh, of the intersection of faith and art, um, which were for me at the time, two things that seemed at odds, uh, those two pursuits. Uh, how, how would I carry a level of rigor into both without one upending the other? And so Mako and others uh, in his community there were a really timely uh, examples hmm. for uh, myself and other young people uh, who said there's no there's no conflict and in fact um you know <laughs> pursuit of beauty is um is inside of the pursuit of of god so um that that was very helpful uh at at that time in my life and his uh, continued writing and teaching has been an encouragement along the way. Have you, have you seen some of his work that he did with the four gospels? 
Yes. And actually, when he was working on those, uh, I got to visit his studio and see him working on uh, a, a, some of those pieces. So, yeah, it's a, it's an incredible thing what what he does with the material. He he puts so much care into the, the choices of uh, the minerals and things that he grinds up and crushes. And mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a thing that can really only be beheld in person. Um mm -hmm. And and I love that he, he has a 500 year plan for all of his pieces. He anticipates in the way that he combines materials, the way that they will uh, age. And wow. so he has a, he thinks that his pieces will ripen after his uh, time is, is come to an end here, wow. which is, is a, also, a you know, it's a rare thing and maybe something we should all consider how our, wow our efforts may I well, have no after idea that, yeah. that is amazing okay is it true that he uses real gold in some of his paints yes yeah mm -hmm. wow. other uh precious minerals so so pray, praise god for that i mean that so i don't like modern art at all mm -hmm. but when i saw his art I was so overwhelmed. It almost brought tears to my eyes. I was like, wow, this is unusual. The color, the, you know, I don't know what it was. It, it wasn't modern. I don't think I'd call his work modern art. I think I, I would call his work um, divine design. That's mm -hmm. the only way I can describe it. Yeah. I mean, he's conversing with his Nihonga tradition from Japan, but also... Um, you know, also modern art things, but I, I think he's uh, doing it with a lot of care. And mm. also he's a good interpreter of it, which can be helpful. Mm. So, yeah. That's really neat. A 500 year plan that I've never, so that, that inspires me just to hear what you just said. I'm, so you have just inspired me tonight. So like we print, we publish books, rare books. And um, you know, right now we're getting ready to, transfer from a gluing a glued book to a smythe sewn needle and thread Ooh. book exciting you know? yeah it really is exciting it's a game changer for me because i i the old books in the 16 17 1800s they were always threaded you know and those threads are still held up today 200 yeah. years later so you'll be making something that will truly be an heirloom yes yeah. yes mm -hmm. good okay <clears throat> another mutual friend you spent some time uh, down with Andrew Peterson, I heard. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so when I was in high school, a friend gave me an Andrew tape or CD, whatever it was back then. And uh, I, I was listening to it and I, I remember I was working on science homework and uh, just it was kind of background noise. And then he said some line that just pierced me and I and I think looking back I realized I wasn't alone um here was someone who was artfully uh but honestly communicating a wrestling kind of uh, holding out his doubt uh openly hmm. but also there was a level of commitment uh that was evident to to the pursuit so, uh, yeah, I think having his work throughout my college years, um, especially, it was a kind of an anchor that I went back to, mm. uh, to remind me of, you know, my first love, um, that sort of thing. And so then many years later, I had the chance to, um, to do some work with him and be kind of enveloped into the the community that they've uh, got based in Nashville, but has fingers out mm -hmm. around the world, really. Um, and it's a community, the rabbit room that uh, encourages artists and, and people that are interested in creative things. So that's been a great gift um, to have his, uh, you know, him in my life. Hmm. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at the studio and then I'll ask you some questions about other things that have inspired <laughs> you, but you have a unique studio. Tell us what you do, what you enjoy doing the most, and what brings the most joy in your life. 
what brings the most joy in my life um <laughs> besides being a dad and, and a husband <clears throat> yeah uh so let's take those in turn we'll start with the studio okay i guess uh let's see so this is my little shop um you can see some of it there and i've got a couple of uh little presses back here that i do uh print making things on and then I have all my little miniature people up there on the walls and various books uh, scattered around. So that's so, uh, that's okay. my shed. Tell us your tell us your website because I was blown away when I looked at your website. Where where do people go to take a look at this? Yeah, it's just my name, StephenKrotz.com. StephenKrotz, C R O T T S dot com. Mm -hmm. So, Stephen, when, when you see all of those, all the artwork on your website, what, what kind of artwork is that? <clears throat> mm, uh, I mean, I think that uh, the my influences are fairly clear to those who are, you know, familiar with late 19th century and early 20th century books. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking at a lot. Uh, I'm... I'm inspired by handmade um illustrations you know the pieces that were created carved into blocks to receive ink and and go into books so that was wood wood cuts wood engravings really came into their prime after uh buick in the 18th late 18th century and then the 19th century was full of them Wow. And they really continued into the 20th century as well. But uh, there's so many old books that are full of um, these these pieces that have, uh, I, I think they have a timelessness to them. So I'm trying to shoot for that. But um, yeah, they, they, they really are timeless. When um, when I showed our students your video of you making some of the prints, you should have heard, I think, did I send you um, a little bit of a clip of one of the videos? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. were so excited, you know, and I haven't seen that excitement in a long, long time. And so I'm super excited about you being at the Guild this summer. Students to have an opportunity to learn a new dimension of art. You know, I don't, none of our students have ever had this before. So this will be a first. And so if you're interested in illustrating, if you're interested in, in what did you call it? Woodcut illustrations? How do, how do you, what's the title? Yeah, so um, it is uh, block printing uh, <clears throat> is a reductive process where you're removing the uh, highlights from the block. So you've got a block of wood or linoleum or whatever, <clears throat> um, and you're, you know, taking a tool and carving out what is the light part and then you're leaving the dark and it, it's also in reverse because it's it's got a you know when, once a paper takes the ink it will be the mirror so uh that's the basics of it uh you know and then from engraving to lino cut type stuff it's a little bit difference uh in the uh the material one has a is a lot harder and smaller and but lino cut which i think is what probably will focus on um, is now there, there's so much available that uh, one can come to it with without a ton of uh, experience and, mm. and find a result. So the, the trick is coming up with a compelling image first, which will also be part of the journey. Mm. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I have an idea. You tell me if this you think this can work. I would like to do these, the, the illustrations that you're going to be working on, the woodcuts. <clears throat> and actually, we will talk ahead of time. <clears throat> excuse me. And actually have a book prepared where the woodcuts, we can... Um, have the illustrations ready to go into the book and by the end of the week actually have an illustrated book. What do you think of that idea? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you if we could. Oh, so, really? Oh, I definitely cool. was. That was part of my, I was like, 
that might be too much to ask for. Oh. So I'm going to have to butter him up first, but there it is. <laughs> so yeah. that well, would be, you. yeah, once, once I found out there was a bindery on site, I got rather excited. So. Oh, cool. That's going to be very, wow. What a goal that's going to be. Wow. I'm so excited about this, Stephen. Stephen, yeah. all people have to do is go to your website and they're going to come. Um, go to stephenkrotz.com, take a look at his work. Um, the, just the very fact that he has hung around with Mikado Fujimura, may, he may be one of the greatest living artists of, of the last hundred years. I've not known any, anyone like him before. Okay, in your studio, you have a banjo, it looks like, in the back. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, I play a little claw hammer style um, banjo which is uh, back porch kind of music that, yeah. Uh, so yeah. You bringing it? Of course. Yeah, oh, it, cool. It goes <laughs> with me. That's awesome. Okay. And then on your bookshelf, I noticed that you've got a book called Jerusalem. Yeah, this is my Holy Land shelf behind me. So I keep a little uh, shelf just close to me uh, that's uh, about that subject since I'm kind of, I'm, I went last year for a, a time and I've been uh, diving into that whole subject to try to come up with some some projects. So nothing to announce yet, but hopefully, hopefully soon. We're going to be there in two weeks. So we're really excited about going. We're taking our whole staff and, and some of our students. So yeah, I, my, after seeing it and sketching it for myself, I've, I feel you know, I've got some kind of mission to help people understand that oh. land. Wow. Uh, and well, that's, that's, I think amazing. that's going to be something that I'll be engaged in for some time. Wow. Oh, and keep me in, keep me informed on that. I, I'm very interested in that. That would be amazing that that's called theological illustrations. Hmm. You know, can you imagine? Could be. Yeah. Um, I think there's so much to learn um about the physical setting uh, of the incarnation it hmm. just seeing it um you know brought it to um so it just it went from like black and white to color you know yeah. and wizard yeah. of Oz. it's like that kind of moment so you're gonna have to plan on coming with us next year we're gonna be going um every year uh, that's my arm the last week in April 20th to the 27th and then into the first week of May. We're going to try to go every year. We have um, a new administrator that's going to be guiding and preparing everything. We're super excited. Um, Michael Card was just here. He's been going on these tours, I think, for close to 20 years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, he's getting ready to, to re not, I don't know if I'd call it retire, but he's going into a new season in life. And um, we've asked uh, the person that's helped him all these years to help us. And I believe he's going to be doing that. So we're super excited about that. Good. And uh, uh, there's just so much. Like you said, it turns black and white into full color when you're there. Uh, yeah. I can't and wait Mike, to students Mike is one of those people that I look, look to um, as a, <clears throat> a kind of, I, I want to be doing similar things to what he has done in uh, helping people's imaginations uh, to be informed by the reality of what has happened in that. Okay. Plan. So. That's, that's why you and I click. I think that's, I think Michael Card, he's done it better than anyone I've ever known. Mm -hmm. and, and Mikado Fujimero, Andrew Peterson, uh, we tend to tend to all walk in the same circles here. And um, Michael has, has uh, the imagination series. Have you, have you ever read that? Yeah, I've got it back here. So. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. His his understanding of scripture is so cool. Um, he, he taught our students last week that Jesus was probably no no taller than five foot six. I'm like, yes, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that, um, yeah, the, I think that was one of the biggest uh, things that was driven home to me was this, this uh, man was a man. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that's the wonder of 
Uh, that's part of the wonder of what happened. Uh, <clears throat> is that he was put, he, he tabernacled among us and mm-hmm. did a very ordinary existence. Mm-hmm. And, but did uh, achieve the most extraordinary existence yeah. uh, in in a plain old context. And, and that means a lot to me. And that's what God wants from us. Um, we can live that same way. We can have an extraordinary life. He, he said, you'll, you'll do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine. So, yeah. uh, you know, if you read Proverbs chapter chapter eight, it says that wisdom will give you more, will provide more for a person, more than rubies, more than silver or gold, more than treasure. It says this, it says, is that you cannot imagine, there's, you, you cannot desire, it, it's beyond anything you can desire, wisdom will provide much, much more. And so I, I really believe that um, God has so much planned for us and in store for us and it's there for the taking, but it's also requires discipline and hard work and sacrifice. And if we're willing to do that, God will provide the increase and, and the joy that comes with it. Yes. Okay. So uh, tell me a little bit of what students can expect. Just, just take me on a little bit of a tour of what you envision your time at the Lampletter Guild this summer taking what, what will what will the students can, can they expect? Well, you mentioned discipline, and uh, it's funny. I've been going through uh, after after we initially talked, I started going through uh, these you know all the classic movie scenes of a platoon arriving and getting a speech, and I thought this would be fun to come up with <laughs> a tough guy speech. But uh, <laughs> but part of what I would love to spend time uh, doing is helping uh, the group come to uh, a new discipline of um, observational drawing Mm -hmm. and note taking Um, because I think that is something that could serve them whether they're involved in a visual art uh, career or not. Um, The act of observation is so important uh to a rich life and Mm -hmm. um, so i think it would serve any vocation um journaling writing that sort of thing so i I want that to be part of it um uh, spending time looking at things and drawing and paying attention learning learning to pay attention to the world that we find ourselves in because it's full of wonders Uh, (laughs) can anybody come that that has basic art skills, beginner skills, advanced skills. Can you have both? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, some, some level of prior involvement with visual art will of course be helpful, but um, I think the tools and materials are such that anybody could come to it without mm-hmm. feeling, um, you know, unsatisfied by the end. We can, work with everybody i think um but i would say anybody who's wanting to to come go ahead and start drawing Hmm. uh, in the time leading up to it so So how about somebody that's part of it okay how about somebody that doesn't feel like they can draw at all they have trouble drawing stick figures um they don't have good hand eye coordination um they don't have an understanding of, um, you know, 3D dimensions and drawing and stuff, stuff like that. Are there some people that just, and I'm, I'm talking about myself, <laughs> are there some people that just, they shouldn't even try? Mm. Here's the reason I'm asking. I would love to be able to do some kind of illustration. I, I enjoy watching someone painting. I, I would love to do it myself. Um, well, some- I, I look at certain artists who have what seems like such a natural facility. I'm, and I'm, I'm convinced that some people are just better. Um, yeah. You know, there are <clears throat> known so many people who can draw uh, just light years beyond what I'll ever be able to do 
and uh you know they make for a while i wondered should i quit um but then no i just have a different process a different way of getting there and uh, um generally i don't think drawing is um a mystical magical thing that can't be taught i think it can generally be taught mm -hmm. so uh, i don't think it's impossible um i think it's something that most of us have just uh we've set it aside when we were kids at some point but we all started drawing so uh we we could all pick it back up probably um, okay i'm gonna i think i'm gonna register for your class <laughs> um but anyway the the drawing part would just be I, I sort of see three pieces to what we want to do and of course this is early so we can talk about how mm -hmm. it looks exactly but i would love for sketchbooking to be part and then mm -hmm. a sort of a group engagement with some idea or mm -hmm. piece of literature or piece of music i want to find some kind of common thing around which the group can uh, spend time in thought and discussion and then out of both of those uh, develop a set of idea or a set of visual ideas that we would then tackle individually uh, on the block and oh. so that everybody gets uh, to come away with having made an addition of prints uh, at least from one block, you know, maybe there's more if somebody's really uh, exuberant. But what I would love as a baseline is for every student to have a print from all of their classmates so that the the number of the edition would be uh, at least the size of the class. That's what I've always done in printmaking classes in college. At the end of the semester, there would be an exchange print between mm. all the classmates, which is a nice yeah gift and it's a good head start to a, a real art collection that's really cool so wait a minute how are we going to do this if we don't have a you know a print machine I'll like you it. have very I mean, high tech <laughs> this is how it's done so in order in order to buy this press i made an edition of 100 prints with this no way uh, and so those so that i could uh work up to a an easier tool this is not needed no uh, for um for people to have success yeah it's a it the process is basically you you roll ink onto the block put paper on and then apply pressure and it's amazing how quickly it comes together that's so cool <laughs> That yeah. is so cool. Unless you just want to, you know, buy an etching press before the summer, that would be fun too. But uh, <laughs> that's up to you. <laughs> Can you um, email me just some uh, your recommendation if I were to buy something like that? Yeah, I can certainly do that. Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah do that. And I may yeah. send a list of suggested reading uh, once we get closer to to folks who want to be in a you know prepare a little bit better. Um, we can do that too. So okay, if you can send me that over the next couple of days, I will. Um, we'll send that to all of the. Uh, we'll put it on on our website, lampwetter.net, uh, and make that accessible to everyone. Yeah. Cool, Stephen. I'm really looking forward to it. Where do you see the grounds? the The tulips are coming up right now. We planted a hundred uh, tulip bulbs last year, last fall. They're all coming up right now, and. Uh, the flowers, the zinnias that we're going to have planted, you're going to feel like you're walking in the Garden of Eden. It's so beautiful in the summertime. It looks beautiful from photos. Yeah. yeah. I hope we get a chance to do some plein air sketching uh, in the area during the week. So, Would you like to do plein air woods, lake, or waterfalls? Oh, exciting. Uh, yeah. A pond with a pavilion. A church, stained glass windows. It all sounds exciting. Yeah, you'll have your choice. Yeah. Cool. So, well, yeah. let's give your website one more time. StephenKrotz.com. Cool. Any questions and, for me? Um, 
I think I'm good so far. Anything yeah. you need, we'll provide. I I think I am. This is to me. This is like the ultimate. This is uh, I I. As soon as I saw your website, I'm like, whoa, we've got to get this guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember Rainey talked to you first. Then we, you and I talked on Saturday. After our discussion, I was so excited. I went to your website, showed all of our students. And Stephen, I wish you could have been here. It was like a party. They were like, ooh, oh, look at this. We spent close to probably 20 minutes staying on your website. And then they said, why don't we have them come and teach? You know, at, at our collegiate program, and uh, we'll talk more about that. But you're going to be here, I think, on the 19th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and uh, that's going to be really cool. Yeah, well, I, I'm always uh, excited by a group of people who are passionate about learning, and um, or you know, excited about looking up from a screen. <laughs> Yeah. And seeing anything real and valuing it. Um, I'm I'm glad to think about being around those kinds of people. You're gonna, uh, you're, so. you're gonna be really, really um excited to see when, when you get here. Um they well, they had Michael card for a week and Michael Michael he, left. He, he said he goes, he's never experienced anything like that. He just was very he felt very valued and and very blessed by the week. And then, oh, Steve, Stephen, Mike did a Friday night concert. I had never seen so many people in tears. It mm. was it was like a reunion for people that have been listening to Mike for the last 25 years. Mm. Pat, it was standing room only. And um, he just did an exceptional job. He, he's, su he's such a humble guy. I, you just You just have to love him. Yes, he seems to be, uh, in, he increasingly uh, cares less about what any, yeah. <laughs> what other people think of him. He's just, <laughs> he uh, is, uh, but but in the direction, not of some sort of cantankerous thing, but he is somebody who embodies contentment. Yeah. Not a kind of vain striving. So. That's uh, really cool. Okay, well. Everybody, Stephen Krotz, um, in the flesh, you got to see a studio. And uh, Stephen, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm going to see you in um, a couple of weeks. So we're excited about having you come for that, as well as the 2023 Lamplighter Summer Guild. Go to lamplighter.net for more information or call us 1-888, the letter A, gospel. It's 1-888, the letter A, gospel, which is 246-7735. That's 246-7735. Or to learn more about Stephen and his um, work, Stephen Krotz, C-R-O-T-T-S dot com. Stephen, looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. God bless. Thank you, Dr. Hamby. Yeah, you yeah. too.